First one on Scorpion DC, guys. Yes! What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to the Weston Smith channel. Today's video is gonna be so sick. We have been waiting for this reel for months. We pre-ordered this thing, and it is finally here from Japan. That is right, y'all. It is the brand spanking new 2021 year model Scorpion DC. This is like insane. Our first ever Shimano reel was the Scorpion DC, but it was the original. Uh, well, not the original, but I think it was the 17. So that was my first Shimano. And then it just evolved from there. You know, after you get into the quality of that Shimano Daiwa realm, it's tough going back to anything else you've fished. Reels that start breaking, budget stuff you should always start with and then upgrade to something like this in the future. By the way, if you guys want to grab this thing, links to the best places to shop for it are going to be at the top of the description. But I just wanted to unbox it in today's video, give you guys a full uh, instant review on the thing, right? Not like a six month review, we're not that far yet. We will probably follow up with something like that in the future, but I can guarantee based on previous Shimano's and the other Scorpion DC, the thing's gonna last. We are also going to be fishing this reel tonight. I'm at a juicy spot, hoping to get on some top water tonight for you guys, but also I wanna test this DC braking capability and we're gonna do that by throwing out some light baits. We're just gonna throw like a Ned rig out. We're gonna do this, that, and the other. We're gonna have some fun, we're gonna showcase this thing. Let's go ahead and get into it. All right, everyone, we are jumping in right here by the ponds in the Subaru going to showcase the Scorpion DC right away I'm noticing there is zero English on the user manuals that's funny it looks a lot different than the previous year too I brought our last one the 17 I'm gonna show you guys the review we posted of that 2017 Scorpion DC is actually my highest viewed video first and foremost you're probably noticing the absolutely sick like tricolor scheme red black accents on that like gunmetal frame it is absolutely beautiful so we got the xg and right-handed primarily because i believe when it went to those pre-orders and they went on sale that was like all we could get so we got the 8.5 to 1 gear ratio which means the spool spins eight and a half times for every full turn of the handle i would say if you were just looking for something across the board that you could use with all your baits grab the hg model right left or right-handed that would be either 150 for right-handed and 151 for the left-handed model. The odd numbers kind of designate left-handers for Shimano's lineup. So what have we got to say about this thing, man? Smooth beyond belief. We haven't, we're not gonna test out the drag yet. It says it's got 5.5 kilograms of drag, which if I'm not mistaken, is probably like a 12 pound drag uh, in pounds. I'll have to go ahead and find out that conversion through Siri or something. You've got a scorpion on the tension knob. It looks so sick. You have Shimano's Magnum light spool, and then also you've got four steps to the braking system. There is, if I go through here, you, you can slip it all the way over to open. You can take off the side plate. When you take this side plate off, that actually reveals this little lever that you can adjust based on your line type you're throwing on this reel because it is so advanced with that digital chip system, the braking system. So you can literally tell this reel if you're throwing fluorocarbon on it so it will perform better, that is the designation F. Then there is the N designation for like nylon, which is monofilament. And then you also have the P, which is uh, for PE or braid. So P is probably what I'm gonna put this on today. We're gonna spool it up with 50 pound braid. We might throw some top waters later, but I can also tie on a leader if we wanna throw some bottom bait, some fluorocarbon. So we're gonna show you exactly how this thing performs so now let's piece this bad boy back together flip this to close and then I'm gonna move the brake dial from open to one being the least amount of brakes two three four which is kind of like the max brake setting but then you have an even more advanced setting there's one more click there is a W on the Scorpion DC this is new on the last generation it was an A for automatic now it is a W for wind so if it is really windy you put it in the W setting and that's going to give you the maximum amount of brake for this reel and I can almost guarantee you're not going to get a backlash in that setting I know that the IDC4 systems and something like the SLX DC or the Corrado DC uh, feel free to correct me if I'm mistaken I'm pretty sure those are all IDC4 systems they don't have an automatic or a windy setting like these Scorpion DC reels do and that comes in so clutch when it is windy out you do not want to be getting birds nests in the wind and just ruining your fishing experience you want to go out there have fun catch fish right and that is what these reels allow you to do this is what I love about it, it takes your mind off of it you can just think about fishing of course once you get great with your casting you can throw out any reel you can dial it in you'll get max distance and the least amount of birds nests but this definitely 
helps. One thing I found out about this reel that I thought was interesting as well is that the XG, so the extra high gear ratio, this one that we ordered, actually has a longer handle by six millimeters. It is a 90 millimeter handle. But the two lower gear ratio models, including the HG and that one uh, just below that, I'll go ahead and post its gear ratio up on screen. Those two actually have like an 84 millimeter handle. So it's very subtle, right? Very subtle. But this one with that higher gear ratio is just wanting you to crank those fish in there a little bit more. They, uh, the engineers over at Shimano, I guess, decided that a uh, that extra little bit of length is going to help you crank these fish in on this XG model. I thought that was pretty cool. I didn't actually know that until just recently. What I want to do for you guys now is spool this thing up and do a little bit of fishing and show you this thing in use. Hopefully we got a little bit of a breeze that we can cast into with some light baits to really test this thing. I'm going to toss it on the Guggen Squad Gold Rod. I'm going to put it on the Go 2 model. That is a 7 foot medium heavy fast action rod designed for the majority of baits in your tackle box. And tonight I'm going to be throwing a handful of different baits across multiple weight categories we're really just going to test this thing out let's go ahead and get this thing spooled up man i hope you guys have some kind of idea of how excited i am about this reel like this last scorpion she's definitely beat up she's seen the pavement a few times i mean a little clunky after uh four years might just be a little glimpse into the future on how this one's going to look in the uh, year 2025 but you know time will tell we got the uh, reel cranked on there. Let's grab this Guggen Squad 50 pound braid. And I think we're gonna do a quick leader knot to some 15 pound fluorocarbon just to start. And then I'll probably just rip all that off as we go for some evening top water, which really could start to work right off the bat. But again, I wanna show you guys a full, full test on this thing. So let me get this done. Okay, so can one of y'all in the comments settle this for me once and for all? These holes in the spool, I believe are just to lighten it up, right? Like this is their Magnum light spool. It's only on this side of this specific reel because I'm sure it works best with the braking system that weight offset i really am not 100 percent sure but let me know if i am not supposed to do this because usually when you spool up braid on your reel you'll go ahead and do a little mono filament or fluorocarbon backing just go around a few times that way your braid doesn't slip when you set the hook and you maybe have a big fish on the hook you know that braid can just kind of slip on the spool a little bit if you didn't do a backing and then tie your braid to that or you could just tie your usual knot around the spool and maybe use a little tape just to secure it to the spool i've heard of people doing that but i don't see how that's really any good for the braking system or the fact that you're paying all this money for a magnum light spool it says uh, i thought it was magnesium light spool but maybe that's just the mgl models but this one said it has a magnum light spool anyways you see what i'm getting at here i fed the braid through those holes and i'm now tying my knot to that so theoretically it should never slip because it's like locked on the spool is this a good idea or a bad idea is this what those things are like you know partially made for or just not at all is this unsafe for the reel I, you know, over the years of fishing, I haven't really had anyone explain this to me. So please do in the comments. I know y'all keyboard warriors are going to chime in and say it's probably like going to destroy this thing, but I, I highly doubt that. All right, we got to get to fishing. Let's, let's hurry this up. One thing you're going to have to do with new reels is make sure you tighten that drag. They keep it loose from the factory. It's best to store reels with your drag, like long-term storage with the drag backed off. Not like, you know, everyday type of stuff. Let's get this braid out here. This isn't the best way to do it. It is just one way. It's also best to pinch your fingers around that line if you're doing it somewhat like this. That way, your line goes on the spool nice and tight and your first handful of casts are not just absolutely terrible and you don't get a bird's nest right off the bat despite the fact you pay big money for a DC reel. By the way, we paid like $350 for this thing, I'm pretty sure. It was like a $100 deposit when we initially reserved it in early February and we just got it. It's now like the 4th of July weekend and we just got it and uh, the second payment after that $100 pre-order was I believe $250 bucks, which I think included the shipping. So yeah, I think we're all in for $350 on this guy right here. It's on like a $150 rod. So you're looking at like a $400 combo. And let me tell you what, she does look and feel like money. Yeah, I love your car, man. Hey, thank you, appreciate that. I know this is a review on the reel, but if you guys are looking for a super easy leader knot, let me show you. I'm about to blow your minds. I literally learned this from Fish NFL, a Florida fishing guide. When we were out there fishing with him, he catches big snook, all kinds of stuff on this knot. So before you question me on like its integrity and its strength and all that stuff, just know that it works for him and he's like getting paid to catch big fish for a living and he uses light leader lines. So anyways, what you do is you just get a short bit of line and instead of, you've probably heard of the double uni knot and maybe you use that as your primary leader knot, Knot. this is a single uni knot watch this so you just get both pieces of line have them overlap you do a quick little circle and then as long as you have a short bit of leader line what you do is you just go around 
like five times, just kind of going through with your braid and your fluorocarbon or your monofilament. It's so funny, it's just one simple uni knot. I'm gonna do one more time. I'm just gonna go like four passes, we don't care. The reason you want a short leader is that way you're like just able to pull that line all the way through. So this is only gonna be applicable to like, if you've got like, you know, a, a leader that's just a few feet maybe at most. So there we go, I've essentially just got one uni knot. It's like five passes, I'm gonna wet the line and now I'm just gonna squeeze those tight. And uh, that is literally it, it's, it's just one uni knot it's not a double uni it's just extremely simple quick and jason out there in florida who guides for a living trusts it so i do too all right y'all we've got a weightless texas rig tied on to start things off and we've got top water to hopefully end here as the sun is setting let's toss these in the bag let's not forget our makeshift line cutters lock this puppy up and it is time to test this thing out so pumped game time y'all slick calm conditions i'm gonna cast over there by those reeds to start just checking my drag pretty tight check my tension this is a weightless rig and it's falling really fast so if you're just trying to dial in casts I recommend tightening it up to where your bait drops slowly that's a good place to start if you're newer to bait casters and then you kind of back off as time goes on and you thumb it better when it hits the water etc so I'm tightening this thing up there we go slow fall just a good place to start we can max out cast distance here in a minute and then I'm also gonna put brakes it's on that windy setting I don't think I'm gonna need it we are throwing a light bait though so let me put it on three so it's kind of like in the middle grounds right Let's throw this thing on three. First cast ever with this reel. Nothing off camera. Let's see what happens. No, that was no thumb until it hit the water. Casted way out there like a dream. I can already tell I love this thing. Something to be said about those Shimano like knobs too. Just like so much comfort. I know I'm hyping this up like it's a sponsored video, but literally the Scorpions I think are Devin and I's favorite reel. I'm probably working this a little too fast. I'm getting excited out here, man. I'm not even letting it sit. This is a weightless five inch lunker log. I mean, this thing's just gonna be falling ever so slowly. Green pumpkin, I could get hit by a bluegill, bass, big, small, anything in between. How sick would a frog be right here in this stuff too? Oh my goodness. We'll get to that here in a minute. Let me back off the tension just a hair and I'm gonna go down to the two brake setting. I'm gonna see if we can't get a bird's nest with this DC. I'm barely gonna thumb it, but let's try and get some distance here and go across this pond. Oh my gosh. I basically hit the bank on the other side of this pond this is 50 pound braid, by the way. So like thicker braid than you might use for most applications, right? Like if you're trying to get a far cast, you're not necessarily throwing 50 pound braid. Uh, the lighter the line you go, the better the casting gets, generally speaking, right? So something like 10 pound fluorocarbon, you'd be casting this thing an absolute mile. Something like 15 pound fluorocarbon is what I recommend for general all purpose lures. And then if you're talking about, you know, top waters and stuff, oftentimes most top water applications require braid or are best suited to braid. And 30 pound braid is a good all around if you're kind of mixing it in for like long casts and then tying leaders like a fluorocarbon. We're throwing 50 pound braid on here and she is performing. Thinking I gotta get a cast just kind of straight out. Just kind of finding the deepest water. That was an overhead cast. Sometimes those can get you as opposed to like what you're used to from the side. Some people prefer overhead, but regardless, I've now casted this a few different ways and I haven't been so smooth with it and absolutely no bird's nest man digital breaking one more time in case i didn't make it clear the scorpion models have that idc5 breaking system like the very expensive metanium dc so you're getting a lot of quality for the price with this reel i mean i'm pretty sure corrado dc's still go for like 270 i just ah it, they've lost so much appeal to me since they've gone mainstream and they've got that idc4 system i'd rather have this it's just like, you know, the SLX DC was introduced to the market to become that just cheap DC option. They just want to get something out there so that the masses could grab these things. But if you want something exclusive and just a beauty, of course, I'm just out here bank fishing, but if you want to deck that boat deck out with some quality, oh my gosh, like just, I think I'm gonna need to make a move by the way. I've been casting in this whole corner, haven't got any bites. I'm throwing literally one of the most finessey presentations you might throw on a bait caster with a seven foot rod and then I just got a bite. I don't think he's got it though. Wow, I just got a bite. That might've been a bluegill. He's got it. Got him. First one. First one guys. Yes. Yes. First one on the DC. First one on the Scorpion DC guys. Oh, nice, nice. Yes, yes. Right over there by the grass off the concrete structure. Oh, right where you were supposed to be, bud. Look at that lunker log and on the new reel. Oh my goodness, feels great. You could not ask for more. That's insane. Look at that solid chunker on the new, mm. 
What a dream. We're gonna just get him right back in the water and go for another. See ya, bud. But since we got one on that light bait, now we can test out the top water. The sun is going down. I think we might be able to get a hit on a frog. I'm just gonna tie on one of my favorite subtle presentations, which is a walking frog versus a popping. Since there's low wind, I can work it in that strike zone a little bit longer. And I've uh, just kind of shortened the legs on this guy. This is a Guggen Squad filthy frog. I, I like white bellies for clear water. And then I like the, the dark bellies for either like uh, after dark or maybe in some more stained water. I, I usually have a black one in here, but regardless, like a darker belly for those stained water applications. That, that's typically what I do. So I'm gonna tie this guy up real quick. We're gonna chop off that leader knot, go straight braid, and we're gonna see if we can catch us a decent sized hop water fish on the new reel. All right, y'all just got it tied on with uh, our favorite knot, the Palomar knot. So I'd say nine out of 10 times, that's what I'm tying, unless it's like a real technique specific knot. Look at this, man. This looks like we're gonna catch a fish. My walk definitely suffers on a right-handed reel. I usually am working the rod with the right hand, but tonight I'm working it with my left hand since this is a right-handed reel. Again, Devin and I, uh, oh, something rushed right over to it. He got it first. Wow. I literally just had a frog blow up the first cast over where I caught that last fish by the concrete and the grass. I didn't give him enough time. I didn't even like feel his weight, but holy smokes, he might come back for it. Just a nice slow walk in that same area. Wow, he didn't get hooked. So there's a good chance he may come back for it. Got a nice little cast under that dock. This would be a great place to target midday, but here at sunset, there might just be less, less fish kind of chilling under there. They might be kind of just more active on the move. All right, y'all, there's another pond in this community that has some bigger fish. So what we're gonna do is we not only handled the casting with the lighter baits, but now maybe we can test this thing against a big fish in another area. We can tell you how that drag works. So let's get over there. Seems like we're just getting small bites. Wake, wake. He's missing it. There's a fish trying to bite it. Oh my gosh. Jeez. What is this? I don't think that was a bass, man. How am I getting all these little fish? There's big fish here. I'm beginning to think the frog isn't making enough noise out here, but I don't want to throw any treble hook baits because I don't have any pliers. But it looks like there is a buzz bait. Got him. There we go. Nice. First fish on top water tonight and first fish on the buzz bait for me, I think all year. And he's going a little crazy, y'all. I think I figured out why I'm not connecting on these fish tonight. They're just all this big so far, but I know there's big ones in here. Second fish on the new reel, feels good. We still got time to fish and we're throwing the buzz bait. It's a good time. That was the perfect spot, right as I was passing in between the rock column there and then the grass on the right. That was just textbook. There might be a bigger one that's willing to chase now that I got that little guy out of there. Maybe a hungry, larger fish wants to follow it up. And the answer is no, but we're gonna find one. Oh my gosh, we just had a hit right there. Oh wow, right out in the middle. It's a little guy, but like that was unexpected. Man, I hyped this pond up for catching some little guys. I'm gonna loosen up the tension just a hair and I'm gonna go to the one setting and we're just gonna see if we don't get a bird's nest. Oh no, but this thing like hauls, it flies across the pond with those settings. We have now tested this thing out pretty much from maximum to minimum. I'd never put it on the windy setting just cause it wasn't really applicable today. Well, safe to say there's no more light left. I think we are out of here, y'all. All right, you guys, we are back at the house. We had a ton of fun today. Sorry we could not secure a giant, but look, we caught a handful of fish on the new reel the first time out, an hour and a half before sunset, so I'm a happy camper. The Scorpion DC is linked down in the description if you want to purchase it. Remember, this is the brand new 21 model. The 17 model is now the previous version. If you guys want to grab this thing, be sure to check that link. Don't forget to drop a like on this video, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Remember, if you have any further questions on the reel, go ahead and just drop a comment. I'm going to try to respond to as much as possible and be on the lookout because we're going to start fishing with this a lot and we're going to catch some bigs on it also if you get this to a thousand likes guess what we're going to grab another reel from japan very soon thanks y'all see you next one